Hi, I'm Pierre. Brought to you by DigiKey and Ada Fruit this week. It is in Sala Lady Ada. What is the MPI of the week this week? I'm glad you asked. This week's is a Sensato. We've not covered them before, uh, but them and Cryden, I think Cryden is their sub-brand, make solid-state relays, and that's what we're going to talk about. Their Series 1 Hockey Puck SSRs. Um, they have a bunch of... This is a generic image, the one we've got actually triggers off of uh, DC at uh, a lower voltage. Um, but uh, DigiKey carries a lot of relays. Like I actually kind of went to the relay section. They have like 30,000 different options. And relays look usually something like this. Um, Crichton, since I don't, don't have non-solid state relays, they, they only make those, but this is a mechanical relay. Um, and this image from the DigiKey site shows on the right, you have um, an electro, sorry, on the left, you have an electromagnet. Um, and when current goes through that uh, copperish coil, it uh, turns into a magnet, which then um, pulls the two flanges on the right together and make the contact uh, bridge they join together thus connecting um, the circuit and you know people have been using electromagnetic relays for a very very long time and they're inexpensive and again there's hundreds of thousands of them available different sizes uh, configurations currents etc they can switch ac or dc all's good but there's one there's actually two kind of big deal problems with um uh, mechanical relays um, one is that, and this is this is the one that happens the most, is they have to be replaced after a while because the contacts are only rated for a certain amount of clicks, connections and disconnections. Um, after a while, especially if you're switching high currents and um, high voltages, you'll get arcing on the contacts, and the contacts, even if they're gold-plated, will eventually start corroding. And you see, uh, this is an image from um, Wikipedia on the right, on the on the you know middle left, that's what a clean contact set looks like. On the middle right, that's what um, corroded contacts look like. And so, a lot of relays are designed to be plug in to um, unplug them basically and replace them when they've reached uh, their life limit. And so often, you know, we've, you're like, oh, the local stoplight uh, stopped working. It's because the relays inside broke and they just have to be replaced. The other thing with mechanical relays is they're slow, like the electromagnet has to turn on and then the magnet has to pull that um, uh, flange of metal over from left to the right. And so um, they're not fast. You can't, for example, use them to like PWM to dim lights or dim, um, you know, high uh, power heaters or whatever. Uh, you can only use them to turn on and off, which is, you know, again, fine. Um, but sometimes you want more control. And that's where an SSR comes in. So there are um, a lot. There's many families um, from the uh, in sizes from uh, Crichton Sensata. Um, we're going to just talk about Series One, but they have a, a couple different uh, variations. Some of them can do AC. Some of them do DC. Some of them do uh, have back-to-back. SCRs and some of them have thyristors and you know they have documentation showing all the, the differences between why I might want one or the other and these are often used in you know robotics automotive um, automation where you're switching huge amounts of current um, for example you know we had our oven serviced uh, only about a month ago so you have to open up the oven and you can see um, on the bottom there are those blue things if we zoom in those are the controllers for the heating elements um, which are, you know, like up to 100 amps total um, across the, all of the different um, heating zones. So these are like, you know, easily 20, 40 amps at uh, 200 plus volts. You can see um, the, you know, hockey puck style relay down there, each each blue one wired up to each set of heaters, multiple heaters for top and bottom. Um, so not surprising that they use SSRs, you want something that's reliable. Um, that can switch a huge amount of current uh, and won't fail on you, especially you don't want an oven to fail and the contact sticks and then it like stays on. That's no good. Um, this latest family from uh, Cridum has a couple, you know, nice uh, niceties added, um, basically improving thermal performances and um, making you know cables the internal connections thicker. So inside this hockey puck design is a circuit board that has. You know, an opto isolator and um, circuitry that will switch on and off the AC current output. 
Um, so you know, the in, in, inside of it is not that complicated. So you want something, you basically want to make sure that you have one that's easy to heat sink, has good accessories, fits well, is designed safely. Um, some of the things I like is that, uh, you know, on the top left, they have um, anti-rotation barriers on the terminal blocks. And on the uh, back, they have a really nice um, flat area for the heat sink to connect, which we'll talk about. Um, so if you look for the this family of SSRs at DigiKey, there's about 3,000 options. Again, we're only going to talk about like one in particular, but um, all, all of them have very similar setups. Um, you, you want to make sure that you're, it's rated for your voltage, input and output, and uh, particularly some of them only do AC, some of them can do DC as well. Um, you'll see here like the wiring diagram that shows the inside of it, and then you can have the load um, on either side. Uh, but they are opto-isolated, which is kind of nice. Um, and a lot of them you can drive from little as three volts DC. You tend to be able to drive them from DC or AC, but um, the uh, output, sometimes you can only drive AC depending on what's uh, inside. Um, for example, this one, that you know, the one I picked, uh, can do up to 280 volts AC, up to 90 amps, and can be controlled from 3 to 32 uh, volts. There's two output types. There's the, the zero cross and instantaneous. Um, it is easier on everybody if you only switch current on or off on the zero crossing, um, or at least, you know, switch off on the zero crossing or switch on the zero crossing, because then you don't have um, as much inrush current. However, there are some times where you might want to turn on or off in the middle of the cycle. And so um, some are kind of set up to do one or the other. It's another one of the configurations that's often set up. All these have the same kind of chassis mount. Um, and they have uh, different current ratings. You're going to pay more for bigger current ratings. So they start at 10 amps. They go up to 125 amps. Um, but each one of them has... Um, basically the same forward voltage and that's the thing you have to watch out for when using ssrs one thing that's nice about relays is besides just being you know inexpensive and plentiful is they don't need heat sinking because uh the contact um resistance is nearly negligible there's no circuitry inside so you don't have a forward uh voltage drop you don't want to drop across it whereas these if you see kind of on the top area middle um they say uh, maximum on state voltage drop at rate of current 1.15. So that's 1.15 uh, ohms, which means that um, as you are sorry, at volts, which means as your current goes up, you know, 10 amps, now your peak dissipation is 11 and a half watts up to 100 um, amps. Now you're talking about um, uh, 100 you know 100 and sorry 115 um watts that you might have to dissipate and you know these come up to 90 amps so yeah we're talking about like 100 watt dissipation and the circuitry inside definitely definitely cannot handle um dissipating that much current through the past transistors on the output so what you definitely need to do is have heat sinking for them and that's a, a very common issue with ssrs is you know you're like how come i can't uh control the current that I think I can is because you're not um, dissipating the current off of it. Uh, you're not dissipating the power off of the the body of the SSR. So um, Cridem has some documentation showing here's how you do the calculation. You basically treat it like a, you know, it's a transistor, but it's just very mechanically large. Maybe I'll show it on the overhead real fast. Because okay. I happen to have this. Um, so this is the... Um, Really, I just got the, the, you know, it's only, I think, 25, uh, 25 amps out maximum, the 1225, uh, low voltage input, high, uh, up to, only up to 100, yeah, so the 12 here is 120 volts AC and 25 amps. This is kind of the least expensive, most common for basic uh, American or Japanese power. And then on the back, you see you use these to uh, bolt onto here, and this is your nice flat um, heatsink surface. So don't forget to also pick up a heat sink uh, and they come in different sizes for the different um, amount of uh, degrees per watt. You'll need to dissipate, do the math, right? You don't, you can get away with, looks like the HS172 if you're only dissipating 10 watts, but if you're doing, you know, hundred watts, uh, maybe I'll have to check out that HS2201DR, the gigantic thing in the middle there. Um, 
they're going to be more expensive the bigger they are. So, and of course, they'll take up more mechanical space. I have so far not seen any actively cooled SSRs. I think that they're not done because it's just another uh, thing that could possibly go wrong with your setup. Um, okay, next up, um, they also have covers. Yes, I actually got one of these. It's quite nice. Um, cheap SSRs don't come with covers. Some of these, you know, the SSRs actually come with them already uh, attached in. But I really like it. Uh, it's a nice, clear safety cover. Uh, protect you from the SSR. It's high voltage. And protect the SSR from you. Uh, you don't want your oily fingers um, getting all over the contacts and uh, possibly loosening them. That's no good. Um, so this is the one I picked, you know, but there's a, a gigantic family of them, but, uh, this is the, uh, 25 watt, uh, sorry, 25 amp, 120 volt AC version. Um, what I particularly liked about it is you could control it from as little as three volts DC. Um, we have a video that they post showing how to test it, which is a common thing I've seen from people. They're like, I understand there's no, I I'm doing, um, you know, I'm doing a, uh, contact measurement using an ohmmeter on the output when I switch it and I'm not getting a beep why not because it's solid state it's not mechanical uh so let's check out the video right. yeah longest video um for this segment but we think it's worth it really good. so watch it welcome to this edition of Crytum Tech Lab one of the most common questions we receive through Crytum Tech Support is, how does one perform a simple operational on-off test on a solid state relay? We will demonstrate such a test here today. Unlike electromechanical relays that can be giving a basic test with a continuity checker or ohmmeter, solid state relays, SSRs, require a minimum amount of load current to switch. Testing with a meter does not present enough of a load on the SSR to allow it to turn on and there is no mechanical contact closure within to show continuity on the meter. Additionally, since an SSR is by definition a relay with no moving parts, there is no audible click to provide confirmation that the input is actuating the output. All of that being said, the basic setup and operational bench testing of an SSR is quite simple. Note that line voltage will be present during this test on various terminals, so be careful. For this demonstration, we'll be testing a Crytum D2450. This is a DC input, 240 volt, 50 amp AC output SSR. Since this particular relay output is usable on AC line voltages from 24 to 280 volts AC, and requires only a minimum load current of 40 milliamps, using a standard 25 watt lamp and a 120 volt source is perfectly adequate. The wiring is quite simple. Here are the connections. One side of the 120 volt AC line goes to one of the SSR output terminals. It doesn't matter which, either number 1 or number 2. The other side of the solid state relay goes to one side of the load, and the other side of the load comes back to the other remaining AC line connection. For testing purposes, there is no particular attention needed for hot or neutral connections. A solid state relay will switch either leg. The last item needed is the input power signal. With a 3 to 32 volt DC input SSR, such as the Crytum D2450, a single good 9 volt battery is a convenient input source. Just be sure to observe the polarity. The plus of the 9 volt battery needs to go to the plus terminal number 3 of the relay input. If the SSR to be tested is an AC input type rather than a DC input as this is, the input signal would of course need to be the appropriate voltage. The first test step is to simply apply the line voltage while observing the lamp. With the D2450 being a normally open relay, the lamp should remain off when power is first applied. If the lamp is on at this step, then the output of the SSR is shorted and therefore bad. If the lamp is off, the next step is to see if the output will switch on when the input is applied. By touching the 9 volt battery terminals to the input terminals of the relay, the lamp should come on if the SSR is good. Removing and applying the battery should correspondingly flash the lamp on and off. As seen here, this solid state relay passes the basic operational test. There are many more detailed tests that are performed on SSRs at the factory during production, but a simple bench test performed as shown provides a quick indication of SSR operation. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching this edition of Crydom Tech Lab. Hi.
on NPR.